Hello everyone, my name is Jorge Luis and this is my lecture recital. This is one of the requirements for obtaining the title Doctor of Music in Performance from the Florida State University. I would like to thank my advisor, Professor Bruce Holzman, for his knowledge and his support. I would also like to thank the members of my committee, Dr. Sarah Everly, Dr. George Speed, and Dr. Ben Sang. Thank you all for accepting my invitation, and I have to say that I feel honored to have such great professionals helping me on my path here at FSU. Thank you very much. The title of this lecture is Editions for Classical Guitar, Types of Editions, and Performance Intentions. It's divided into five main parts. A brief introduction, followed by four more parts. After the intro, I will present and discuss the five types of editions and perform pieces to illustrate these editions. The editions I will present are the facsimile, our text, diplomatic, critical, and performance. You can see this at the bottom right corner of the slide. The part that I will be discussing will be highlighted in red. So, let's get started. I would like to begin by answering some questions. The first one is, what is this lecture about? This lecture shares the same subject that I will approach in my treatise, scholarly editions for classical guitar. But here, I will focus on five types of editions and examine their characteristics through a philological lens. The second question I would like to answer is, why is it relevant? I believe this research is relevant for two main reasons. First, our tradition in classical music is to learn new repertoires by reading scores. However, the types of editions and the editor's roles are barely addressed by teachers or college programs. This leads to a lack of awareness of the musical score's role through all performance states, what restricts performance possibilities and what limits new research on the subject. And second, by analyzing graduate works that had musical editions as a final product, we found out that many works had misconceptions at the master's and even doctoral levels. We concluded that there is a lack of bibliographical sources related to the editing process. That's why our research is based on philology's editorial methods and conceptions. By the end of this lecture recital, you will better understand the features of the main types of music editions and the editor's role in the music communication process. I hope you will increase your critical view of the music score and realize the importance of researching the writing culture of the work that you are going to learn or teach. To finish the introduction, I will talk about the editor. The editor's main responsibility is to prepare the edition. They apply the right editorial techniques to the text to shape the edition for a specific public. The quality of an edition is strictly related to the editor's integrity and transparency. Editors are almost invisible professionals, yet their work is extremely important to our daily routine as performers, researchers, and teachers. The relation composer, performer, and audience is broadly known, but the editor also has their role in this string. The type of edition you choose will determine the quality, integrity, and final result of your performance, and consequently the listener's experience. 
The editor has power over the edition, and their power is determined by the type of edition they propose to do. And by power, I mean their level of interference over the text, over the original text. Here we show the editor's level of interference, and it comes from the strictest level, dark red, to the most flexible and brighter red. In the flexible level, the editor has more power to clarify, add, subtract, or change information in the text. On the other hand, in the strictest level, the editor's interference over the text is minimum. Let's go to the editions to you better understand the editor's role. Our first type of edition is the facsimile. In a few words, a facsimile is a photograph of a document in physical or digital format. When you take a picture of a document using your smartphone, a camera, or any device used to capture images, you are creating a facsimile of that document. But remember, it is not an edition, it is just a facsimile. And a facsimile produced in the ways I just described isn't professional, but it is still very useful. We also have professional facsimile editions. And the main objective of facsimile editions is to recreate the original document with the highest fidelity. We usually make facsimiles of rare, delicate, and unique documents, historical documents like manuscripts. The elaboration of a facsimile helps to preserve the original document. Physical properties like color, texture, and quality of the paper should be fixed objectives on a professional facsimile. The size of the document and its legibility can be manipulated once the editor describes these improvements as critical notes of their edition. This is an example of an original document where the faded, faded ink was made clearer using ultraviolet light. Information that wasn't visible to the naked eyes on the original became visible. And important historical information can be rescued through this process. Regarding to the text of facsimiles, the editor doesn't have power to modify or hide any kind of information. Even if there is wrong information, like wrong notes or eraser marks, they must be kept. Remember, the main objective is to recreate an original document with the highest fidelity. The facsimile edition has the most restrictions on the editor. Their power is very limited, and that's one of the most important features of this type of edition. The facsimile allows direct access to the composer's intentions, without third-party interventions. If the editor corrupts any information of a facsimile, all editions and research made through this corrupted document must be discredited and invalidated. A good edition is a reflection of the editor's hard work and honesty. But the problem with the facsimile is that these documents can often only be read by experts. The older the text, the harder it is to read, and sometimes handwriting is illegible or very confusing. To play Mert, to play Elegy by Mert, I use the facsimile of his manuscript. I have also found two editions of the work, but I decided to use the facsimile for these reasons. First, 
I believe you must have a very strong reason to challenge the composer's authority. Especially when dealing with performers composers who wrote directly to their instrument. In these editions, the editors usually don't mention what they modified, omitted, or aided. And second, Mertz was a guitarist composer and known as a great virtuoso. In other words, he knew the capabilities and limits of the guitar. His fingerings, notations, dynamic marks, they express his musical intentions behind the notes. I use the fact simply because I wanted to have direct access to the composer's decisions, without interference from third parties.
Our next type of edition is well known and often disseminated in the music area. Let's talk about the Urtext edition. Urtext is a German word that means original text. When compared to the facsimile, the main advantage of the Urtext is that the reader doesn't have to deal with illegibility. Reading, reading an Urtext is much easier and faster than reading a manuscript. The Urtext was developed in order to clean up all the editorial interventions that music publishers were doing to their editions in the 19th century. In these editions, it wasn't clear what musical materials were written by the composer and what materials the editors changed, removed, or aided. Frequently, the same work was published many times by different publishers, without clarifying these uncertainties. As a result, the public, the customers, wanted more reliable editions. Customers were willing to have the original text. Their text edition was a solution and became a reliable type of edition. As I said, our text is a German word that means original text. Ideally, it should be elaborated from the earliest version of a text. Authentic our text editions are made without any changed or aided material. But many took advantage of the name, and for market reasons, editors started to expand its concept and editorial practices. Many editors started, started to use more than one source to elaborate their text edition. Others made their texts of second manuscripts and first editions instead of the original source. As a result, the term or text became very controversial and was often used to editorial abuses. Now I would like to make a link to the diplomatic edition. The editorial process on an honest Urtex edition is very similar to those used in diplomatic editions of the philology area. In diplomatic editions, the editor makes a strict and extremely conservative transcription of all graphic elements of the document. Here, the editor never fixes the probable mistakes made by the author. They don't make any change related to the author's culture, and the editor intervention is minimum. The problem is that an text is an edition made of the original text, the first manuscript. If there is more than one manuscript, it should not be possible to make an text of the later manuscripts. In order to be faithful and scientific to the term to the term urtext, one should never use it to describe later manuscripts or editions. For this reason, I believe it's worth it to use the term diplomatic edition instead of urtext. The term is broadly used by philologists, scholars, and editors of other areas, while the term urtext is only used in the music area. The art text deserves a deeper discussion for its nomenclature, which I do in my treatise. When I made the critical edition of the Homenage à Debussy, composed by Manuel de Falla, I also made diplomatic editions of his manuscripts for guitar and piano. I would like to discuss the critical edition before I play the piece. Here I also talk about the diplomatic editions I made from the manuscripts. A critical edition seeks to determine the composer's true intentions through a critical comparison of two or more sources. The editor will gather all manuscripts and editions of a single work and evaluate them. Annotations, letters, and marks of the composer are also relevant. 
The main objective in the critical edition is to find the composer's final intentions. For example, here we have three manuscripts from the same work and same composer. If the composer wrote a fortissimo in manuscripts number one and two, by changing it to a mezzo forte in manuscript number three, the element of the manuscript three, the mezzo forte, is the right one to configure in the critical edition, because this is the composer's last and decisive intention. This is one of many methods used to elaborate a critical edition. There are different methods that are, are applied in different situations. The editor must be aware of the composer's history, repertoire, and style in order to make a critical edition. In a critical edition, the editor doesn't add, subtract, or omit any information by themselves. All of the decisions must be clear and based on the critical methods and evidence. Here, the editor's mediation level is high. They will analyze the scores elements and justify the best option to elaborate their edition. But this is the editor's interpretation and it will never be final. A critical edition is always open to other views and interpretations. I collected 11 sources to develop the critical edition of the Homenage Group C. The next step was to determine which documents were pure and exclude those that had a third part interference. They were not used to elaborate the critical edition. The pure sources were compared note by note in a long process to elaborate the edition. And these are the documents I used. The composer's first manuscript for a guitar. The manuscript of his transcription for piano and his arrangement for orchestra. Going back to the diploma diplomatic edition, I also made diplomatic editions of the guitar and piano manuscripts. And finally, I put everything in the same grade. The result was an elaboration of a mixed edition, two diplomatic editions of the manuscripts and my critical edition for guitar. My objective was, was to make the documents I used available for the reader. As a result, the reader can instantly read the critical edition and analyze the manuscripts to understand the, the decisions I made.
The performance edition is the last type of edition I will discuss. That's the most famous type of edition in the music area. And it's usually developed by known performers. This is an edition where the editor writes their performance decisions in the original text. Addition, subtraction, and modification of ornaments, intensity marks, expression marks, articulation, and even rhythms and notes are frequently present in performance editions. Talking specifically about the guitar, the most characteristic elements in these editions are the fingerings. They express the editor's culture, musical intention, and technique and solutions for complex passages. The performance edition is ideal for amateurs and students when they are not prepared to make their own musical and technical choices. It's also appreciated by performers who aim to understand a specific performer's decisions or even to play the performer's version of the piece. The performance edition is the edition with the highest degree of editor mediation. The major problem of this type of edition is that the reader never knows what was written by the composer and which modifications were made by the editor. Here the editor power is huge and in many cases the editor can be considered a kind of second composer. For example, it is not an exaggeration to state that the piece I will perform, the Invocation and Dance, composed by Joaquin Rodrigo and edited by the guitarist Alirio Diaz, is a Rodrigo and Diaz composition, due to the massive modifications made by Diaz. But I also have to mention that when a guitarist makes such heavy modifications, they are almost always done to pieces written by composers who don't play the guitar and don't understand how it works. These composers don't know the guitar's idiomatic characteristics and limitations. For these pieces, the editor's role is to, is to make the work fit on the instrument and to figure out solutions for difficult or even impossible passages. In summary, the editor's role is to adapt the musical discourse to the instrument's idiomatic and physical possibilities. These are some examples of adaptations made by Diaz. I found them very feasible and I liked the musical result. That's why I chose to play his edition.
To conclude, I would like to say that there is not an edition superior to another. We don't have better types of editions. We have different editions and each type of edition has its specific features that aim a specific public. The editor must be aware of the importance of his work over the edition and be extremely faithful to the right procedures to elaborate the edition. On the other hand, the performer, the teacher, they must be able to identify their intentions to the work they are going to learn or teach and find an edition that match with their intentions. That's the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Here you can check out the bibliography I used to develop this lecture. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you.